Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It's really good to welcome you to St. Margaret's Church on this fabulous Easter morning. A really warm welcome if you're joining this service online too. Uh, great that you are among us, whether you are regulars worshipping in this community, whether you are visitors on the periphery of this parish, you live in the parish and you dare to pop in once from time to time. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're visiting friends and family from further afield, welcome. Uh, we have the joy of a baptism this morning. We have uh, the joy of breaking bread and sharing bread and wine together. And our young people and their families, if they would like to go with a supporting adult, uh, are going to spend some of the service today doing something special, maybe surprising. So if that's something that you would to, like to participate in, um, either head for under the tower just now or join the procession as it comes in and you'll head out across the road to the church centre and then come back later in the service. Uh, you're very welcome, uh, people of all ages, uh, whether young or the not so young, to join in with that if you like. When it comes to receiving communion today, if you receive communion in the church in which you usually worship in, if you're confirmed or admitted to communion, you're welcome to receive here today. And if you're not sure, or you're not yet confirmed, then um, please do come forward to the altar at that point in time to receive a blessing. I will ask your name and we will pray together God's blessing on you this Easter day. I hope that you have everything you need in your order of service and a hymn book. And so as we begin, if you're comfortable, and whenever I invite you to stand, it's an invitation and not an instruction. If you're comfortable, I invite you to stand. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today.
reading from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him <coughs> receives forgiveness of sins through his name. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as we sing our psalm, Psalm 23.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Ravuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Christ. May I speak and may we hear in the name of the one who created us, the one who redeemed us, and the one who sustains us. Amen. It was dawn on that first Easter morning. Christ had risen from death. But as yet, nobody knew it. Christ had risen, but the Romans were still in power. Christ had risen, but the world still looked very much the same. The sun still rose in the east and set in the west. And the weather, well, it was pretty much like it was two or three days ago. Christ had risen, but those who were ill on the Saturday were still suffering on the Sunday. Christ had risen, but on the surface, nothing appeared particularly different that morning to the day before. Jesus must have been again alive again quite some time by the time Mary Magdalene hurried through the dark, only to find the tomb empty. She believed him to be dead. So she still grieved for him. 
and even more so when she thought that his body had been taken from her too, snatched perhaps. For Mary, the resurrection was not yet real. Jesus was alive, but she did not know it. Some of us, or perhaps for folk we know, we today are still living through our own Good Friday and Holy Saturday. The reality of grief and suffering, I know, is not far from some of you. It may be so great that whatever it is that you or loved ones are enduring, it may be so great that whatever the world is enduring, that the resurrection doesn't seem real. If that's where we are this morning, perhaps we know it's Easter, and yet it seems that nothing has changed. Nothing changed except actually the smell of the beautiful flowers, and, and thank you for those of you who were involved in turning this place and filling it with colour again and hope. But if it feels like nothing has changed, perhaps we might ask ourselves, along with Mary, asking in compassion with Jesus' words, why are you weeping? And we know those words were not spoken by some pristine spiritual apparition, but by the real Jesus, the one who knew the path of suffering, the one who still bore the wounds of crucifixion on his hands and his feet. But something that morning changed for Mary. The resurrection became real for her. And so how can the resurrection become real for us? When Jesus spoke Mary's name, she recognised him and knew that he was her Lord, alive again. It was in that moment of being with him that the resurrection became for her not just a profound prophecy or a far-fetching idea, but something that changed her life. And for all those living in the darkness of pain and worry and grief. Anybody who's anxious or fearful of what the world offers us today, I pray this morning that the sound of that risen but still wounded Christ calling your name may enable you to find something of that hope and the possibility of joy rekindled. So it's quite common on Easter Day
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe. With the shell, a sign of pilgrimage, or the lines on the scallop shell, leading us in the way, the truth, and the life to the central point, the source of love and creation. Finn. I baptize you in. when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith that you... rather lovely that we might all be reminded of our baptism vows. And so um, during the offertory hymn I shall be coming among you and reminding you that you too have been baptised. Fragrance of rosemary, not just for your Easter lamb, the Passover lamb, but the herb of remembrance reminding us that we have all been baptised. Finn, would you remind me? that I've been baptised. Thank you. <laughs> there may be some of you this morning who have not yet been baptised. This might just encourage you to think about it. The waters of new life. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you, and also with you. Alleluia. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 73, Ye Choirs of New Jerusalem.
And so as our offertory gifts make their way to the table, we're mindful that we not only give of our money that God has already given us, but we also bring to this table something of ourselves. These baskets are a symbol of all that we've received, our gifts, our talents, our times, and our resources are all gathered in this holy place. Gracious God, we pray that these blessings would continue to bring glory in your name. Amen. Be present. Be present, Lord Jesus Christ. Our risen High Priest, make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Amen. The Lord is here. The is Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, has restored all people in the image of your glory. He has placed them once more into paradise. He opened them to the gates of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may to be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Our young people have returned. We're about to say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. And I would like to invite them with their cross and banner to come and join us here at the front. 
as we, just, as we say the Lord's Prayer together now. And so, as Jesus taught us, in whichever language or version we are familiar with praying, we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trains, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. prayer of spiritual communion for those who are joining the service online. Thanks be to you, my Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now our young people uh, disappeared off and came back again, and I gather they've been busy. I wonder if one or two of them might like to come and tell us what you've been busy doing. Who's going to come and tell me? Come on then. <coughs> Excellent. Up your hop. What have you been up to? We've been making a banner to show that Jesus rose on Easter Sunday. You've been making a banner to tell us that Jesus rose on Easter Sunday. And what did you have to do to make the banner? We had to make flowers and put paper chains on. Okay. And did everybody help? Yeah. Excellent. But where is it? Because we've got this one over here in the corner that says, time to watch and pray for Jesus, and it's Lent. And we've got those paper chains, the things that chain us down in Lent. Wasn't that a very brightly coloured rainbow in Lent, was it? I wonder what you've been... Oh! Watch and pray, they say, and see what happens. <laughs> this looks like something very, very special indeed. Let's see. Oh. There we go. Wow. So those of you who are on the far side, Ray, would you like to come on this side and come and hop up on the step and we'll see if we can lift it up. Are you coming to help as well? Excellent. Can you drop that side down? William, do you want to drop that side down and we'll lift it up really high. Ready? Really high. Really high. Look at that. So, he is risen, Allelu hallelujah. I think we need to replace. Lent is finished. And now Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. I think we should take that over to the notice board and put it in its special place, shall we? Do you think you can carry it very carefully for me? Go on, then off you go. That's it. If we go back, that's it. Excellent. Thank you very much. As they do that, just a couple of uh, things to say. Uh, it's been a joy this morning. Thank you for being here. Whatever you do to mark the rest of the day, I hope it's equally as joyful. Um, there are refreshments after the service. You're welcome to stay for conversation and coffee. That would be a lovely thing. Uh, those of you who are younger, who have come on rumours of an egg hunt, um, after the service, if you gather in the porch, um, there may be one or two Easter eggs hiding in the churchyard. Anna has helped put all that together. So Anna will give you your instructions. So please do gather and do that as soon as the final hymn is finished. And I'd like to say to those of you who have been present and witnessed this morning, if you have uh, encountered something of life in a way that you've not encountered it before, as you've watched Finn make his statements, um, we're preparing for people to be confirmed uh, in June, at the beginning of June. So if you're curious about faith and you want to find out more about baptism or receiving bread and wine, please have a conversation with me or with somebody wearing a blue lanyard after the service and we can talk to you more about that. It would be a joy to continue to grow in number and in faith as we go out and proclaim the good news of God's saving love at Easter. May I invite you to stand to receive God's blessings. 
God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting forth from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn, The Day of Resurrection. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. Finn, receive the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.